Talk about more about brand partnership, brands that have reached out to you through because of TikTok. What is that like? You know, and the second question with that is like, you're focused on a certain niche, right? Yeah. So our values or what we're trying to do is the same, you know, should I work with them? Or if a brand does not reach up your value, should I continue working? work? Talk about that. Brand yeah, I mean, great question, Lucas. I mean, to answer your first question, I mean, guys, it is one of the dopest feelings when people will cold reach out, cold email and say, Matt, I've been loving your content. You know, what are your thoughts on working or collabing on this type of deal or this type of brand or this type of product? So if you're a smaller micro influencer, like you'll probably get reached out and someone will say, hey, we'll send you free product for a review, for a video, right? But as you kind of pinpoint your niche and you start to create engaged content, and it gets into a specified niche, you can start getting a lot of money for some of these brand deals. You know, products that I already use as Matt Choi as an endurance runner are now paying money to basically get promoted videos, right? And guys, like that's like, it's one of the dopest, dopest feelings. And recently I did a shoot with Nike running. To be able to represent that brand at this point in my life is like full circle, right? And I did not start making content so I can work with Nike. It's just that when those opportunities present themselves, it is almost surreal because you're like, damn, this is the top dog. This is it. You know, I had a friend who loves Nike and he wanted to become part of their creative marketing team. And I told him, I said, dude, you know, a good strategy would be make a ton of content on TikTok about your love of Nike. You have a bunch of Nike clothes already, throw on different fits of you wearing Nikes, of Jordans, of all this stuff right? Versus the old school mentality of like, I'm going to go to university and get my master's in marketing. And then I'm going to work up the ladder at Nike to then, you know, be a part of their marketing department and go through that hooks and ladders, which, Hey, that is one strategy to get there, but that costs money and time and not saying that that's a wrong path because maybe someone can only see that way. But if you think about like, damn, how do I get creative with like, if I want to show a marketing team, what I can do, what would be the best way? Like if you actually just created the content that Nike could potentially use, what if they reached out to you and said, hey, so-and-so, I love that piece of content. Like what are your thoughts on working with Nike? And like that is a way, if someone's listening to this right now, like don't always think so rigidly, like close-minded, that there's only one way in, one way out. In life, the more curious and open-minded you are, it leads to opportunities. And sometimes you can't even see it because it hasn't been formed before. But you have to be a trailblazer and just say, I'm going to bet on myself and I'm going to find a way to get there. Because in life, it doesn't matter how you get a point A to point B. No one cares. They just want to know how you got there. And you can do it a very conventional, traditional route, or you can do it in a way where the devices that we have in our pockets are so freaking valuable. <laughs> like you can do so much shit on these devices that people are not actually maximizing. So that would be what I would say when it comes to working with brands. I mean, it's super dope. I mean, that's the, that story I just gave you guys is like, that is something tangible. If you're listening to this right now and you love a brand, don't go the OG route. Start creating around the brands that you already like. That is a great way to start if you don't know what niche you're in, if you don't know what you like or anything in that sort. But that would be what I would say when it comes to actually brands. Obviously, if you could, finding companies that do match up with your morals and values is critical because like, I'm not going to be out here you know, supporting brands and companies that are doing, you know, whether it's racist stuff. There's a list that you probably don't want to associate your personal brand with. And the same thing goes when you work with these brands and companies. So I think the biggest tip I can give you guys is don't chase the money. Like Just because a brand is going to give you X amount of dollars to say things, to support a certain cause or reason. Like it's just not worth the money of hurting your own reputation. Reputation is all that matters in this world. How you make someone feel and then their response as they go talk about you leaving this and saying, Matt is a dope dude, is important to me. Everyone is gonna have their opinion because they only see a certain lens. They only see what they see on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? So. I think the biggest thing I can give you guys about just working with brands and, and when it comes to values and morals is don't lose yourself for the money. Your values and your morals should matter more than getting the compensation. Because if you stay true to yourself, I'm a firm believer that the money will come and the brands that you actually want to work with will come. Now, it might take a little bit more patience. That is on you. Like that, that is just a part of the game that if you're young right now, stop wanting shit so fast. Like That's another nugget right there. Like Just be patient. And the things over time, after you've invested the hours and shout out to Nipsey Hussle, when preparation meets opportunity, like you will capitalize on that opportunity, but don't fall short for a little money.